Picture, if you will, the UK in the late 1970s and a very young, impressionable Alex has been given his very first camera. Into these very hands was placed a Spider-Man toy camera. But you know what? It took film. It, it made real photographs. So, you know, it's, it's a real camera. And I did what every one of us has done the very first time that we picked up a camera, is that we photograph the things that interested in us. That Andrew, standing in front of our, my parents' front door, doing silly shapes and what have you, fair game. The apple trees in the back garden, the Star Wars toys, all of these things were photographed for the simple pleasure of just photographing the, the things that amused me as a child. I didn't give any thought about composition or lighting or any of the stuff that would come later on. It was simply just that process of, there's a the thing that interests me, take a picture, end up with a print, yeah, job done. It was only later on, once I'd gotten to grips with the technical side of photography, that the, the spectre of does this photograph have meaning started to loom, it loom large, you know, but we'd been told through reading many books about, you know, photography and how to improve as photographers, that photographs should have story, that they should have some sort of hidden depth and hidden meaning for the viewer to unpick. And, and in certain circles, that's, that's probably true. Certainly documentary photography, or if you're photographing with the express intent of trying to create an emotion, then sure, these things matter. But for, you know, for, for you, if you just want to take photographs for the sheer pleasure of taking photographs. Are your images somehow lacking simply because they fall into the realms of, I didn't think much more about this photograph than simply I liked what I saw and I just photographed it. And it's as simple as that. If you've been involved in competition photography or camera clubs or anything like that at some point, no doubt you have come across these these gatekeepers, if you want to call it that, who guard the great mysteries of photography and, and, and throw out little little baubles for us to, to play with from time to time. And they will quite often say to you, yes, what, what is the meaning in this photograph? I'm not really getting the meaning. What's your intent? What's your purpose with this photo? That, you know, the idea within their minds is if there is no meaning, no intent, that you just created it without adding any of these elements, that somehow then it's deficient, that God forbid you should create something just because it looks pretty. That's, and, and that was probably, you know, certainly for, for me when I was younger, one of the most damning <laughs> pieces of praise you could ever get, you know, why would I create pictures that are pretty? And of course now that we are sort of becoming more, uh, you know, sort of more mature as photographers, certainly I'm becoming more mature as a photographer, I am less inclined to try and shoehorn story and meaning into my photographs where there really isn't any to be had. So that leaves us with two options. Either we are going to photograph with the intent of having story in our images, or we're just going to go, well, I don't really want any stories and stuff. So how do we, how do we go about achieving those two goals? And of course, it's probably useful at this juncture always is to look at some photography. And I, I you know, this is why we're here. We, we love photography. And let's look at story first. There are two photographers whose images jump to mind immediately whenever I think of story or narrative in a photographer who's not working in, in documentary circles. And the first guy is Dwayne Michaels. His photo stories, his little essays, his little comics, if you want to call them that, something like that, they are fantastic. And the very first time that I saw one of these images, it, it lingered with me, not because of the story, not because of the, the, the narrative that was building up throughout his photography, but from a, from a technical point of view, it was like, well, how, how does he do this kind of cyclical nature of these photographs. It is a wonderful thing to look at his photography and think, you know, certainly in, in, in regards to how is this planned out in his head? Because obviously he's gone off and photographed this with purpose, with intent. It is not just the result of, of random photographs. And, and he's quite happy also to use 
the, you know, use words. Use words that go beyond just simply a title. You've no doubt seen these kind of titles at some point in a sort of print judging competition or something that, you know, here's a picture of, of you know, a child with a bear and it, it's, it's, oh, the boy's best friend or, you know, that sort of kind of odd thing. I never understood titling photographs. But Dwayne is bringing into his photography a story, not just visually, but also with text. And, and I think that's kind of, it's fairly on the nose, you know, if, if you want to talk about story in photography, that here is Dwayne Michaels giving you a visual story and they're sort of telling you much of what's about it. But that's, that's fine if you don't overdo it. So if you want to include text and stories with your images, don't feel that just because you are a photographer that you only have to have just images and that you cannot have, have text. You can certainly do, do both. The second photographer who is into storytelling and, and has a very strong idea of, of narrative and lots of depth in his photography is Erwin Olaf. And his photographs are, unlike Dwayne Michaels, they're not really a series. They have a bit of a theme, but individually they stand alone. There's, there's nothing else to suggest a a story beyond the confines of the frame. So we are left as viewers to kind of look at it and go, wow, you know, what is going on here? And he's, he's planting little ideas for our minds to seize upon and work through. And it is a great idea, or a great example rather, of how photographs can have many elements within them that can draw upon us as a viewer in a, in a way that we are, is so open to interpretation that all of us would look at Erwin Olaf's photographs and see different things. There's a feature, you know, there's a clown that features quite often in a lot of his photography. And, you know, the way that you interpret the figure of a clown is going to change the way that you think about the photograph. Now, one of the problems with, with both of Erwin Olaf and Dwayne Michaels is that they are open to interpretation. And we can get a little bit serious about the images. We can go, well, it's all about this and it's all about that. And, and we, we, we gravitate into the strokey beard world of, of, of sort of navel gazing and ending up with books and books and books. He says, trying to pull them all out like this. They're all talking about how you interpret a photograph. And it's like, do we really need a pile of books like this to tell us how to interpret photographs? It's wonderful to hear so many stories from photographers like yourself from all around the world. And if you are new here, just you know, drop us a, a hi in the comments below. And let, us, let, let us know where you are watching these videos from. If you read all of those, would you get any lesser or more enjoyment from Dwayne Michaels or Erwin Olaf? I don't know. It's, I, it's certainly not really changed the way that I enjoy those kind of photographers and, and the, the messages. I, I don't feel that I am getting any more from the images because I've read Sontag. It doesn't really make a difference. So it's kind of up to you. So the, those stories, those images that have stories, and, and if you want to create images that have story, then just say that it's got a story. You know, ultimately, the story that you want it to have is not going to be read by anybody else because everyone else is going to interpret your photographs differently. Boom, there we go, right? So that noise just is in and out, done and dusted. It has no purpose beyond just simply, you know, a little loud, sharp noise. But it's still music after a fashion. And photography is very much like that, that, you know, we have images that have gravitas and that meaning and that story that we've just been talking about. But also there are on the flip side of that coin, these photographs that fall into this lollipop sort of idea. So these are photographs that really don't have much of an impact on us. Much like that snap of my clap of my hands is now faded from memory. It's not, it hasn't. These photographs too, they, they, we see them and we go, oh, that's nice, and, and, it, and it moves on. And in certain circles, people will give you a hard time about this. They will say that, oh no, you know, photography, if you want to be a proper photographer with a capital P, your photographs need to have some sort of purpose. They need to have an intent that goes beyond, I just quite liked this 
photograph. And I'm sure we've all met people who think that way from time to time. But much like from time to time, I like to go out to a fancy restaurant and eat fancy food, I also like to eat lollipops or suckers, depending on <laughs> where you are in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. And to illustrate this, I'm going to share as, as a rare treat some of my own photography, which regular viewers of the channel will, will know I don't really share my photography because it's, it's, it's personal and it's, it's for me. But in this case, this is a, a great example because these photographs are not created for any intent or purpose beyond I like the thing that I saw. The thing that I saw in front of me, I wanted to see what it's, how it would look on, on, on film, for want of a better word. And, and so that's kind of their, their, their whole reason for being, is that I just wanted to photograph that thing in front of me. And, that's, and nothing more than that. There's no hidden meanings in them. There's no, there's no depth. I wasn't thinking of story. I wasn't thinking of, of you know, hidden layers of meaning. They're just photographs that that scene intrigued me for whatever reason, and, and I photographed it. Now, of course, that does mean that, you know, that there was an intent behind them. And don't, don't, you know, don't confuse intent with, with story, because the two are very different things. There is so much photography that doesn't have story specifically, in, you know, in it. Certainly people like Dwayne Marcus and Erwin Olaf, there's a lot of story in there. And, and portraiture, I believe, has story as well. But beyond that, there are, you know, people like you, people who take photographs of, of musicians, you know, live performances. There isn't really a story. They don't try and, we, you know, we, weave in some sort of narrative into them. They're just, you know, photographing the things that are in front of them. You know, uh, you know, sports photographers, they are also, they're not really creating anything that's beyond the, 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 the action that's happening in front of them and, and interpreting that in an artistic sort of way. They're not building story on it. So don't feel, absolutely do not feel, that you are required to constantly put narrative, to put story throughout all your photographs. Don't get hung up on this idea that you have to have these things because it stops you being creative. You should be having fun with your photography. And it's something that I'd, I'd like to you know, touch on in, in other videos is, is we, we so easily lose sight of the fact that the thing that drew us, that, that Spider-Man camera that was exciting, that was fun, was just that. It was exciting and fun. And I was seeing the world in a way that was new and and I wasn't worried about compositions and all the things that we let our, our minds get wrapped up in so much when we take photographs. We should be just doing it for, for you know, just because we'd like the thing in front of us. It doesn't matter what other people think about it. It doesn't matter if, if somebody says, well, there's, there's no meaning to your photography. It doesn't, it makes no difference. Just do your own thing. I'm going to issue a challenge. <laughs> That's it. So yes, you, you there, right? I'm going to give you a challenge. Is for the next few weeks, whenever you go out taking photographs, try and not worry about story. Try and not worry about meaning. Try and be more reactive in your photographs. Just respond to the things that interest you, that intrigue you. Go out, take photographs. Take them for that sheer pleasure of just seeing the world represented in, in, in whatever format that you choose to use, film or digital, does, doesn't really matter. Just experience the world without trying to make it more than it is. Just, just relax for a minute in your photography. If you like doing stories, that's, that's cool, right? But just relax, let's just, just, just lean back, let's just chill and put our feet up and, and just, just have fun, just, just be be present in, in the moment and just, you know, put all the academic stuff to one side. Put all the, the theory and, the, and, the, and, and trying to be a better photographer. Uh, you know, just, just, yeah, just hang it up for a minute, right? And just go off and just have fun, man. You know, I'm guilty of, of being 
stroke your beard. I've, you know, <laughs> I'm also there. So let's for a moment, let's just, let's just take up that chalice. Let's try and just have a bit more fun with our photography. And if you're struggling to kind of get into the concept of fun and, and how it sort of all comes together, I've put a video together that I'm gonna to link to right here that talks about the idea of putting fun back into your images.